everyone, my name is Taylor Dries and I'm in IDS 495 with you. So today I'm basically going to give a short speech about my public narrative and my background on my topic. So my topic is refugee integration within our community and my background on this started probably in middle school. I moved to Grand Forks at that time and we started getting refugees within our classrooms and that's something that growing up in a small town in North Dakota we hadn't seen much of that at all. So to have uh, the new um, Americans in our classroom was obviously very different and as you're growing up you can tell when people aren't inclusive and when they are judging another person because they don't look like them or they don't act like them or maybe even have the first same language. Um, I was always very nice and understanding and that's how I was raised, but you can see that that's not how everyone is, especially living in such a secluded area of the United States where we're predominantly white and we don't have that much diversity within our community. Um, and honestly, my opinion has completely changed. I think we all can possibly start out closed-minded, and the background that you're lacking is probably the reason why you're acting the way that you are. And you don't know these people, but you're not including them or you're not treating them like your best friend or even any other human being. Some of the stuff that has happened in Grand Force is very sad and within the refugee community they've had um, break-ins and threats and also um, people have broken in and started the Somalian restaurant on fire about a year or two ago and so just to see that in our community is very disappointing. So uh, how I became exposed and so accepting of everyone was traveling to Panama by myself. I went and worked on an organic coconut farm and I had no idea what I was getting into and I did it by myself. I turned off my cell phone, didn't have any communication with the outside world for those three weeks in Panama and when I got off that plane and I was the only blonde one, no one had blue eyes and no one spoke English and it was completely terrifying because not being in that situation before, you don't know what to expect and you want to assume that everyone is there to look out for you and be friendly and accepting, but in the U.S., that's not how it is all the time. And then when I go into another country, I also i am feeling like an alien. And we will sometimes look at people who don't look the same as us. I was completely stared at and approached by different people just because they had never, some people that I met had never even seen a person with blonde hair or blue eyes before. So I was the minority for once in my life. And until I think you're in that position, you have a different aspect and approach on and an outlook on that. I, fortunately, Panamanians are very, very friendly and accepting and um, most of them are good and they're not trying to discriminate and honestly the most um, I don't know the biggest value that I took away from working in a village in the remote jungle in Panama was that aspect of being the minority but then how the US varies so greatly in that everyone there was welcoming and they were accepting. I couldn't necessarily speak Spanish fluently, yet at the same time, they didn't care. They tried their hardest. They enjoyed trying to teach me the new language. And I think that's where the U.S. definitely lacks. When others come here, we don't speak, or they don't speak English necessarily or fluently, and we discriminate against that. And we look down upon that, and I don't think that that is right. And I would have never thought that until I had that experience. I would sometimes get frustrated with students and um, classmates who couldn't read perfectly or um, couldn't understand a topic, but then it's like at the same time you see that 
where they're coming from is probably not the greatest. And they're honestly so thankful to be in the U.S. I would, majority, almost everyone is that comes over. And they're just very grateful and appreciative that they're even able to live in the land of the free and this dream of theirs, whatever it may be, can come true here. And I think that that's the most amazing part. And a lot of people, I think, forget that and they oversee a lot of that. Um, they assume that they aren't hardworking or appreciative or want to learn about the U.S. culture. But we have to remember that the foundation that the U.S. was built on was inclusive. It was the United States for a reason. And I think we need to be more united. And I see that problem within our community, especially um, because of the population. But so that's what's led me into this project this semester. I think that there is a lot that can be done within our community. And I think that the greatest, um, the greatest problem is educating the public. And obviously it's not practical for everyone to go work in a different country but on their own and not speak the language but have that ability to really connect with the different cultures that was mind um, I guess it was eye-opening I should say and obviously it's not practical but just to try and educate the public whether it's speaking with a refugee or speaking with a new American immigrant and it's been such an amazing um, journey this semester, seeing that despite everything that's happening in Grand Forks and not necessarily the entire population is very welcoming, but they're so grateful. And I honestly have not heard one bad thing from refugees about the transition within the United States and Grand Forks community. And to think that people will yell at them or make fun of them or not be inclusive, um, discriminate against them, and they still have such a great um, opinion on the U.S. and such a great uh, outlook on Grand Forks. It's, it's amazing, and it really makes you appreciate uh, what you have. So basically, we'd just like to continue this within the community. Um, keep communicating with the refugees. Integration is so, so important, and uh, social media has been a great way that obviously most of us are using, and I think that that really reaches out to, and just reminding people, hey, we're all human. Just because we were born in different places has nothing to do with who we are or what we should be treated like, and that's basically my... Um, personal opinion on this and that's how I would like to continue this so thank you students and I hope you all enjoy